Oh, jeez. It knocked the phone off of the windshield. It's no surprise by now that devices like this that control the sensitivity of your throttle pedal actually do work. But do devices like this actually make a difference in performance? And does it actually make your car accelerate quicker? So this specific device right here is the Speedform Electronic Throttle Controller. Out of any modification you could do to your car, this is probably last on the list of things you think you need for your vehicle, if it's on the list at all. But let me tell you something, this thing does work and it does make a difference, but I've never timed it and I never know it if it actually results in a measurable difference. So today I'm gonna put that to the test. I got my draggy and I'm going to go ahead and do a series of zero to 60 tests with this controller using different settings and then compare it to how the car accelerates when it's on the bypass setting or normal setting which is just how the car naturally is anyway. And see if there's any difference when you increase the throttle response with a throttle controller like this. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go to the spot where I do my runs and we're gonna start getting this testing underway. So before I start this test, I do wanna let you know that the car is tuned. So the throttle response is already sharpened from how it would be from a factory calibration. So with that out of the way, I'm at my spot and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a series of tests and uh, just because I'm on a uh, limited time in terms of the intervals I can do these tests because of traffic, I'm only gonna do one run per setting. So uh, my baseline run, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the way and that's gonna be on the bypass setting and uh, that's just how the car normally is with this tune, which is a gearhead auto octane tune. And then I'm gonna do the second test on the first setting of this device. It has three settings, including an economy mode. So we have like a performance one setting, performance two, performance three being absolutely ridiculously um, crazy throttle response. Very unusable if you want me to be honest with you. And I'm gonna see if any of these settings change. And all I'm gonna do is just mash the gas pedal with traction control off and see if it makes any difference in zero to 60 times. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get our baseline run on our normal mode on the device, which is bypass. And this is just how the car is with the 93 octane gearhead tune. Hey, that was quick. Let's see here. Okay, so our baseline run is 4.6 seconds to 60, which is on par with what this car does without boost launching it. That's actually pretty good for this car. Uh, so now let's go ahead and put it in the performance one setting, see if it makes any difference by increasing the throttle response. All right, now, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch the mode to performance one and uh, this is just slightly sharper than it normally is in drive mode. Um, it's probably between drive and sport mode in the factory tune. So we're gonna go ahead and see if this makes any difference. Oh, geez. It accelerated so hard, I actually had a little bit of a, a wheel hop there on the shift and knocked the phone off of the windshield. Holy crap. Okay, so it fell faster, but was it actually faster? Surprisingly, yes, the answer is it did go faster. So uh, this run was 4.54 seconds. So it shaved off uh, about a tenth there, zero to 60. So that's interesting. So now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and put it on the Performance 2 setting and see if it makes any difference. I have a feeling the phone's gonna fall off the windshield again. <laughs> So now I have the controller set to P2, and uh, this is probably a bit sharper than sport mode is on the factory calibration here with the gearhead tune. So let's see if it makes any difference. There goes the phone again. <laughs> Man. All right. That time it was a bit slower. It was about how it was uh, with the baseline run. So that was 4.66, interesting. 
So with that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and put it on the max setting, Performance 3. It is terribly unusable throttle response. I mean, you can't barely, you have to feather it so lightly, otherwise you're just going to, it, it's a mess, <laughs> needless to say. Uh, and because the phone keeps falling off due to the shifts, I will not be recording a draggy video for this particular run, but of course I'll tell you the time. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's get the car turned around, put it in the setting and see if the ridiculous setting makes any difference at all in our 0 to 60 times. So we're in super ridiculous mode here, performance number three, and we're going to see if it makes any difference. Everything's set up, so let's go. Now, oddly enough, no difference at all. We're back to 4.6. And something I've been taking notice here um, with the controller set in P2 and P3 mode is the car is now pulling back two degrees of timing on the runs where it wouldn't as before. Now to rule out uh, maybe an inconsistency or something here with the car, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do it again in the P1 mode and see if I can replicate the results. If I still get positive knock, uh, then I'm gonna rule it out that it's not the controller doing it because my car does have a very fond history of uh, causing me issues with uh, knock. So let's go ahead, let's try it one more time in the P1 mode and see if there's any difference. Well, the odd part is, the car is now accelerating slower. So I'm having some positive knock issues that I've dealt with this car for about as long as I've had it. Uh, and what I've determined is, the controller is not making any difference with the performance uh, due to this negative knock issue. Now, you would be asking yourself, well, then it doesn't work. That's where you're wrong. It does indeed work, and you can feel the difference. My car, however, is not, uh, it's like a spoiled child. It, uh, you know, when it doesn't get its way, it starts acting up and causes, and has a fit. So, what I can determine from the data that I've collected is that it does make a difference. And I'm going to go ahead, before I finish this video, I'm gonna look through all of the different uh, parameters in each run. So it's not just zero to 60, but I'm gonna see on the G meter if there's any difference or spikes with every particular run because it did seem that the car felt a lot quicker once I had the throttle response sharpened. I wanna verify that maybe it's slowing down after a certain point. At the launch, the car feels significantly stronger when the throttle controller is turned up. So this is a little bonus clip I'm gonna include in the video here, and I'm going to see if it makes any difference with uh, launching the vehicle and the throttle controller turned up. So I actually have it on performance one, and you can actually adjust the uh, each of the performance modes um, incrementally so you can make them more responsive or less responsive um, in each mode it's in. So I'm in performance one, and I have level nine, which is uh, probably a little bit more responsive than sport mode is with the gearhead tune. So I'm going to launch the car, foot brake it, launch it, and see if I can get any better time, especially improving 60 foot times uh, with the controller here. So I have no clue if it's gonna make any bit of difference, but no harm in trying. Absolutely no difference. 4.6 seconds. The car is actually probably not really happy right now, and unfortunately, I have a very annoying headwind that uh, is not helping me with this. March is a very windy month here in Maryland, of course. I happen to pick the windy day to try this. So now that I'm back home, I took a few minutes here and reviewed all of the data on every run I just did, and I've actually found some really interesting details in the data minus the overall results that I did receive. So let me go over that with you. So while looking over this, I've noticed that there is 
some inconsistencies with how the car was accelerating. In the baseline run, the car overall did a zero to 60 time of 4.6 seconds. So on the baseline test, the zero to 30 was 1.94 seconds. Zero to 40, 2.63 seconds. In the first run, my zero to 30 and zero to 40 numbers were 1.9 and 2.62. So the car uh, was actually quicker to 30 and was slightly quicker to 40 with using the controller. And I can actually see on the graph here that that is true. So now let's go to the next test where the overall time was slower than even the baseline. So on the second test using the controller in the performance two setting, the car overall went slower to 60 at 4.66, but it did a pretty impressive improvement on the zero to 30 um, time, 1.88 seconds. And there was no difference other than changing the setting on this. And like I said, I was never launching the car. I was just stabbing the throttle from a dead stop. So it did actually help the car accelerate quicker in that run to 30. And then we started seeing the car slow down again around 40 to 60 mile per hour due to whatever unknown reasons. So what is my final conclusion on this product then? I do wanna say it works. Not only does this provide benefits for acceleration, it does have an economy mode. Even though it doesn't actually make the engine consume less fuel or does some fancy trickery tuning or anything, it does make it a lot easier to actuate the throttle and therefore you are able to get a lot better fuel economy. Now in my just preliminary testing and time with this device, I have noticed a one to two mile per gallon difference in my overall fuel economy with the 93 tune. So I think it's definitely a, a product that works. Now here's the drawback to such a product. Even this being at $130, which is one of the cheaper products on the market, um, it's a lot of money. And it's not something I would recommend to someone, you know, as a performance modification, because while this does seem to offer benefits, it's not giving you more power or nothing. It's basically just helping the car interpret the data between your foot and the throttle pedal. And, uh, you know, at $130 for maybe a few tenths difference in performance is not a worthwhile gain, if you ask me. Also, if you wanted to pick one of these up, like I said, I did get this at americantrucks.com. This was for a 2014 uh, F-150 with the 3.5 EcoBoost. It was the same uh, connector and everything as the 14 Taurus SHO that I have here. So I would assume that the same would apply to every year uh, SHO and or every year uh, F-150 with the 3.5 EcoBoost. So as long as it's for uh, the same year, I would suppose, EcoBoost engine truck, if you're getting this for an SHO, it should work the same. So if you want to do that, that's probably the best place to go for it. And uh, the nice thing about American trucks is they also have the benefit of using a firm for payment. And it does allow you to get what you want today and pay over time. Really helped me out a lot. So americantrucks.com, speed form electronic throttle controller for an EcoBoost F-150. All right, so that is it for this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and if you want to see more content like this, then go ahead, subscribe to the channel, and keep a lookout for the next video.